Hey guys, it's Greg with the Shooter's Mindset. We're here live on episode 364. Um, our guest of the hour tonight, we have Dustin Harding from Athlon Optics. How are you doing tonight, Dustin? Pretty good. Thanks for having me. And then Shane Douglas, who's a prominent Athlon shooter and a member of Team Bagara. How are you doing tonight? Doing outstanding, man. Thanks for having us here. And I'm glad to be here. Awesome. Well, I mean, you know, I can't let somebody with as beautiful of a rifle chassis as you have not come on the show. I had to definitely, <laughs> you always have yours back there. So like I said, I got to bring some heat for you this time and you know, help, help Craig understand that, you know, us bright light guys are the way it is. So it's beautiful. <laughs> exactly. We just, we need, we need to get you a, a, a tripod to put it up there a little bit more prominent, but we'll, we'll talk later about where you can get a good one of those. I've heard there might be some, I might be able to get my hands on. <laughs> maybe, maybe we'll, we'll see. You guys are making me feel like a poor with my little CZ <laughs> and KRG Bravo stock. <laughs> hey man. Oh no, you're probably rich. We're poor because of this. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. Let's say that's my CZ up there, you know, the Bagara, you know, I got a Bagara too. It's over here. You yeah, got one of those. There you go. Oh, look at that. Yeah, I'm starting to like that, but I don't know that there, I've just never shot anything that has fit me and shot as good for me. So I ain't changing it. Yeah. <laughs> so Dustin, let's start with you. For those of us unfamiliar with you, tell us a bit about yourself and how you got involved in shooting and eventually ended up working for Athlon. Sure. So, uh, Grandpa actually got me started into shooting sports when I was a little kid, uh, 4-H, did the air rifles and BB guns and uh, long hiatus through college. I uh, got out of college. I worked at Cabela's for almost a decade. Uh, the merger happened and ended up at Athlon. Um, after college, I shot USPSA, uh, kind of got into three gun for a while, did that and landed on the precision rifle thing. That is awesome. It, it seems there's a lot of us that have came from uh, three gun or USPSA or something. That's yeah. where, you know, I went uh, USPSA, then three gun, and then eventually this with a couple other little random things. It's a progression. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yep. It definitely, definitely is. What, uh, what made you go from three gun to precision rifle? Is there anything that you're like, that just like hooked you? Yeah, I didn't have to set up stages or, uh, you know, in between shooters. And, <laughs> and it was one gun, one ammo, you know. I didn't have to uh, sit there and reload for 12 hours for one match and didn't mind it. That it was, is true. Uh, a, little, a little easier and got to have a little bit more fun. Kind of kick back and enjoy it and not, uh, not so high strung the entire day, you know. Yeah, I, I do remember my, my first... Uh precision rifle match when i shot the gap grind after i shot my stage i'm like all right now 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 what do we do we got to go out there and paint targets how far what <laughs> no it's like now now we go and sit and wait so uh how about you shane what got you involved in precision rifle shooting uh well i mean i grew up kind of in rural kansas and uh just me and my friends always shot i don't really come from like a rifle family my family's all bow hunters and uh you know, upland game birds and stuff. So basically the only rifles I could ever shoot were my friends. And uh, my buddy Scott had a pretty sweet 270 and I, we got to shoot a little ways with that. And then uh, every time I come back home to the farm, I you know started getting more and more into rifles I could buy my own and I uh, started stretching them out farther and farther. And then I uh, decided I needed the coolest gun ever and bought my RPR with an Athlon Argus. And that's when I started stretching stuff out. And that was like five years ago now. And I uh, just been going balls of the walls ever since man just if it's got anything to do with a rifle i'm all about it so no doubt that is awesome so how about athlon where uh where did athlon get it start and how did it kind of evolve into what it is today yeah so it's actually kind of relatively new it's about seven years old uh, a couple of alumni from another optics company branched off and decided they're gonna start their own company and and uh, our CEO, he's, he's well-connected. He knows a lot of people in the industry and, and uh, just made it happen. So here we are, Athlon, ridiculously good optics. He's really good at what he does and, and is able to, to bring out a, a really nice optic at a good price point. 
Yeah, that is a uh, a very valid point. The uh, the price point, I think, is something that's very. Um, what's the word I'm looking for? It's very attractive, for for it sure. Is. But they're you know, it's not like some cheap drunk. You know, I can go and buy a hundred dollar scope that checks all this. No, I couldn't even do that. But you know, I, you could go buy a cheap <laughs> piece of crap. But it's actually a solid piece of glass. Um, and it's really cool that they do, they are full featured. It's not like, oh yeah, you know, this $400 scope does the same thing as the $600 scope besides for this, yeah. you know, it, it does everything that they, you know, that they say they do and that that's needed of them. So, yeah. And that, that's kind of the, that's kind of the, the hurdle to overcome when you, when you produce something that's quality and you come in at a good price point, nobody believes it. You know, they, they think there's something missing and, and trying to convince people. Otherwise you, you have to see it for yourself. Yeah. And that, uh, that, that really works. I got this one here for me a couple of years ago that sits on one of our loaner rifles. And when people are looking at, you know, what glass they want and like, here, take this, go play with this. Let me, let me yep. know what you think. And just, you know, there's a couple other scopes out there that we got on some different guns and, you know, that's a really easy way. And that's my favorite way of, you know, shopping is, you know, I can read all day online what Jim, Bob, Dick and Harry all say about something, but until I actually get my hands on it and can feel what it truly is, I can't really make a decision. So yep. it's nice to be able to get up, get that, get out there and get your hands on it. Sure. So uh, how was SHOT Show for you guys? I know a lot of people, a lot of the vendors we were talking to were saying that basically they had half the traffic through their booth, but did the same amount of business as they always do. Yeah, it was it was definitely a, a different atmosphere. Um, it was great seeing you out there, but you were kind of the, uh, the exception. There wasn't a whole lot of media or influencers or anything. Um, a lot of the smaller, smaller guys weren't there. So the people that came, they were, they were excited to be in the booth, you know, mm -hmm. wasn't, wasn't as much, um, just talking and not getting anywhere. Um, everyone there knew what they were there for. Yeah, that's, that's the truth. I saw a whole lot less milk crates being pulled around full of stickers and swag. Yep. Yeah, I went from a from a stack of business cards like that to about like that this year, which makes follow up a lot easier. <laughs> yeah, that that is true. There there was a lot less of the less of the tire kickers. There was there was a lot of people that were not there that I wish was there. Um, and yeah. There was a lot of empty booths. Like I know at one point in time, I forgot what I forgot what booth we were going to find, but um. Yeah, me and Jen are sitting there. We're looking at the app. We're like, all right, it's in between that and that. And so there's that. There's that. that, that and we're standing like in this area with a couple of chairs. And we look over and there's a little sign on like a coffee table. Sorry, we missed you this year. Yep. Catch you in 2023. Yeah, the, the, uh, like, the lounge, they called it. <laughs> <laughs> there was a lot of lounges this year. Yeah. Because apparently if you don't put something up in your booth, you... Uh, either you lose it or you get fined or, or something yeah you um, you basically lose it and start all over it's kind of a kind of a weird deal you know a lot of people think it's it's uh kind of open to the public and all that and it's it's not it's uh a lot of manufacturers and retailers and uh media coverage and that's about it really not a whole lot of public mm -hmm. and the uh public that gets in there is kind of a i have a friend or type deal it's not like oh you know you're one of 400 random people off the street we're gonna let in you know yep. you gotta find a way in there's no yep. water or anything like that but that that's really cool so um we got some huge news that we're going to go into a little bit later that i guess everyone should kind of know about by now but first let's kind of cover some of the new product because that's kind of the big thing about shot show um First and foremost, um, Shane, if you're looking for a tripod, these guys, they they make one now. So I hear, you know, it's uh, we've been we've been giving Dustin everybody, you know, as much guff as possible because you know our, one of our team members, Darren, is on the catalog and looks all pretty. And the nice part is he's like six eight. He makes me look like a tiny human. 
and to see that thing go up to the point that he can't even look through it, I'm excited because all my other tripods I have, I after shooting like a two day match, I have a crick in my neck from bending over looking in my binos all day, you know. And so yeah. I'm super excited to get some of these on my hands, and it'll be it'll be great. Dude, they are they are like abnormally huge. It is it is awesome. Um, Dustin, you want to kind of go over a little bit of the details of the of the line, your your different sizes that yeah you're yeah. So uh, tripods totally new for us this year. Uh, we've got a carbon fiber series, which is the one you guys are talking about. It comes in uh, four different leg diameter options: forty millimeter, thirty six millimeter, thirty two, and and twenty nine millimeter. And then there's a, a budget aluminum one as well in a 28 millimeter leg. The uh, carbon fiber ones, though, they're coming with everything. You've got a ball head and a leveling ball head. You have nylon leg wraps and they're equipped with molly. So if you want to throw your Kestrel and your pens on there and have a little organization on your tripod, you can do that. Uh, a shoulder pad, you can pick the whole thing up, carry it around without collapsing it. Uh, a sling and a tripod hammock the uh, 40 millimeter will hold 88 pounds and the smallest guy the 29 millimeter will hold 33 pounds so any one of these is strong enough for me to throw my rifle on you could yeah yeah if you're gonna shoot you know magnums in a steady diet a center fire i'd definitely go with the 36 or the 40 um just take out all the shake possible and, and have something real nice solid rigid there the the 29 and, and 32, those are going to be great for uh, guys out hunting that still want to be able to, to mount up their, their rifle on there and, and have something a little lighter, smaller footprint. But, yeah, they're all massively tall. That, that is awesome. <clears throat> so this, this shoulder strap that, we, uh, that you mentioned, that is probably the coolest new tripod thing I've seen for a while. Yeah, you like that, huh? I do a lot. It, uh, we'll kind of look back here. It kind of bridges in between the legs. Like, okay, I can't draw that, but it's basically a shoulder strap that goes in between the legs of it. So even if you got all your crap on it, even your gun, you can just kind of lean down and put your shoulder under it. And even with a gun on it, it seems like it would be pretty easy to carry from stage to stage. And I'm not sure if I carry my gun way up here, but you could, if you're not, you know, you can pick up your gun with one hand and literally just throw the fully set up tripod over the other shoulder and walk from stage to stage. It's just oh, a little yeah. thing, but I think it's going to make life a lot easier out there. It certainly does. I've uh, I've played with it. I haven't had it a match yet. We uh, we had our, our prototypes before shot, and then uh, we finally got our production models in. Um, actually, had to fly those out there. That was my checked luggage. I had to take had to take a week's worth of clothes and a carry on so I could take everything else in checked luggage. <laughs> That is funny. <clears throat> I always wonder what like TSA is thinking during Shot Show Week at the Vegas airport. You know, I have no clue. We usually don't see any TSA notes on anything except podcasting equipment. If we have any like audio equipment, uh, they always seem to open that one up, leave us a little of note. It's funny. I got this um, really awesome little organizer off of Amazon that I basically just leave in my my uh, backpack all the time and it's just kind of like a little folder and all my different charging cables go inside of there so the yep. phone chargers and it, it, it just stays in there all the time and it has charges for everything it's a little extension cord that's like this big and man did t was tsa infatuated with that when i was flying out <laughs> you just got to put that on your carry-on bag but but then like my bat my um battery packs in there and it's like i just want to keep it with me it, just, it literally yeah. just stays in my backpack all the time so um ruth wants to know what matches are the tripods going to be at in the near future so that we could all take take a look yeah uh well i know shane's gonna end up getting one and uh, a lot of the air Rigera, uh, rifle team members that shoot with us they're going to be getting those as well um I'm hoping that the NRL Hunter match, uh, I'm hoping they get back from SHOT Show in time so I can send one out with, uh, with Shane here so I can have that out there. Um, we're going to see the, the bulk of them coming in into February, early March. So then we'll start seeing them out matches quite a bit more then. 
awesome. And uh, another Shane asked, um, when can he get his hands on these tripods? I'm assuming end of February, or early March. Yep, that's kind of what we're looking at right now. That is awesome. It's not not too far out, not that long of a wait. Not at um, all. I don't think we covered the the price range. What what's the price range of these tripods? So the the big forty millimeter one is going to start at six ninety nine. Um, kind of got every price point down to the 29 millimeter, which is 475. And that's with that's with all the goodies. And yeah, yep. you, you think about like I know when I got mine off Amazon, you know, I had like five or six hundred dollars just in that by the time I got that. And then by the time you add a tripod, you know, and all that stuff, that is it's huge, man. I'm excited for it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a pretty good value. I mean, even like this little um thing hanging below mine like i want to say that's like 60 bucks in another yeah shot. yeah so that's a can you shoot cool prone off of yours i can yep it'll be a a fairly high prone but you know that's what it's for so yeah legs... about nine inches yeah mm -hmm. the legs go all the way out <clears throat> it works pretty good for that that thing mm -hmm. so let's let's talk shot show for a second what uh what are y'all's favorite products that we saw come out at SHOT Show? I kind I mean, of, of course, the Athlon, you I say, of course, the Athlon, the Athlon tripod, of course. But then, uh, of course, from Bergera, man, we got those new sweet cure barrels coming out with the, you know, the new lighter rifles. Um, I think you're going to see a lot of that in the NRL Hunter series stuff because, you know, it's the MG light is coming down a magnesium chassis. Uh, you know, that gun was barrel. cool. Dude, they're insane. They're like six, like six point eight pounds. I mean, super, and it feels super lighter light. than that when you yeah. get behind it. It, it feels well even lighter. Yeah, it's gonna be pretty excited. Um, that's we're looking at those, and of course the new divide. Um, you know, I, I was actually kind of excited to see the Seekins one come out too. Seekins rifle or not Seekins, uh, Arrow, Arrow Precision mm -hmm. of all people. They were like, I did not see that coming. And I didn't see that it, one. Yeah, so, Arrow Precision of all people going a precision rifle. I think it's gonna be pretty cool. I'm excited to see one. I, I am too, because, you know, like I said, coming from three gun, that, that safe right there is like half full of arrow ARs. Yeah. Um, I'm a big fan, you know, like, yes, everybody, nobody would mind having all top tier, top of the line stuff, you know, the only, the only optics I use are tangent thetas and you <laughs> yeah. know, stuff like that. But um, yeah, no, that's not realistic. I like. He's out when we shoot. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but you know there, there's not very many many of us that could live that lifestyle so i like stuff that gives you the performance and features of something high end at a at a reasonable price and i mean i absolutely love my arrow ars so when i found out i found out literally on monday at range day that they were going to be releasing it the next day so that seems like a pretty good I mean, you got basically what remington 700 everything and then savage small shank prefits so mm -hmm. I mean, it's basically gonna be a builder's precision rifle. So I think that's pretty cool. Um, there's there's a lot of good stuff coming down. I mean, it's it's a great time to be in the precision rifle world. I mean, I was even just thinking too, like if you think about if you were to step back like 15 years and drop an Athlon Argus in somebody's lap, I mean, they'd lose their minds. There's oh yeah, you know, it's just how how fast the game's progressed up to that is it's just mind blowing. And I mean, we people can bash all they want on cheaper stuff but it has fueled everything and that's why it's so good to be in the precision world right now i mean look at what we're doing with 22s now and things like that it's it's amazing and that's, you know, that's I, all from pushing the market i didn't get to walk the floor as much as i'd hoped i stayed pretty busy in the booth but it seemed to me that this year was a lot of crossover like the the precision rifle game as big as it's gotten a lot of companies are going after that, but in a lightweight hunting market. It seemed like there was a lot of crossover this year. It really felt like the year of lightweight precision. Yeah, and it took me probably until Wednesday or Thursday to kind of feel the show and see what it is. You know, 20, what, 2020 was the year of the 22, for sure. Yep. And, you know, then before that, there was like the year of the AR, but... Um, mm -hmm. I think lightweight precision and chassis also is something oh, yeah. a lot of, you know, Daniel Defense, who's been working on that Delta 5 for a while, they released the 
a new Delta Five Pro chassis by itself um, in a 700 footprint. Um, 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 Arrow is going to be selling that. That's that's another thing I like about the Arrow rifle is you can buy it however you want. You can buy a barreled action, you can buy an action, you can buy a chassis, you can buy a rifle. And that's something I like about them as well is you kind of pick and choose what package you want and buy stuff that's fitted together if you want or just buy whatever parts you want. So um, anyway, let's talk about this huge news that we've all been, uh, the reason why we're all here. Drum roll, please. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really bad at drums. That's why I shoot stuff. I don't do sports. I don't play music. Um, you guys are always known for supporting the shooting sports, whether it be by sponsoring shooters, sponsoring matches or series or prize tables or anything like that. And you guys have found yet another way to support the shooting sports. Yeah. So this year we're doing a great big give back program. There's no catches, no gimmicks. We're not collecting a bunch of information or anything like that. We're just encouraging people to go out and shoot a match locally, regionally, nationally. We, we, we want that community to grow and we want to be a part of that growth. So for every match you shoot, go to our website. You're going to log it. It's basically just uh, contact info, the name of the match you shot and where you shot it. And you're going to be entered in a quarterly drawing for $5,000 cash and $5,000 in optics. You don't even have to use Athlon Optics. You, you can shoot with anyone. It's not what this is about. But uh, for those people that do support us and shoot with us, we want to do something special for them. So if you take first, second, or third using an Athlon Optic, we're going to do a grand prize drawing at the end of the year for $20,000 cash and $5,000 in optics. That's impressive. That, that's just really cool, you guys, to support those of us in our quest to shoot money downrange quickly it's been really fun watching the excitement behind it and seeing people getting excited for it and i'm hoping that they you know bring their friends out and, and try something new and experience what uh what, what we love that is awesome what uh what if they're what if you don't use an optic at all what if you're shooting like uspsa does that count totally counts uh any shooting sport so we've got archery on there uh, you know shotgun trap all that kind of stuff it all all qualifies just anything in the shooting sports community industry uh, however you want to word that it, it all qualifies that is, that is awesome Let's see i'm waiting for the the comments to explode with questions on that one <laughs> <laughs> mike, mike schlack wants to know if he's eligible mike schlack hey mike how's it going bud no. <laughs> Aaron Mashud said, way to step up and support the shooting sports. That guy sold one or two athlons. One, one or two. Or <laughs> yeah. Four, four million. He is that was a actually, good dude. That was actually the first guy I bought an uh, optic from. I was living in Minnesota, and uh, I bought, a, bought another optic that just wasn't working. Of course, I didn't know anything, so it was like the – you know, like the crosshairs were in uh, MOA, but then it was mill for the uh, the turrets. It was all messed up. It was a mess. Oh, and, that's uh, like some 1970s yeah. stuff there. Oh, yeah. It was a total dumpster fire. And I met uh, I met Aaron online, and that's what he hooked me up with my first Argus. And uh, we've been buds ever since. So, man, so wait, was, you, was your range in Minnesota uh, the one that Ruth um, – what was that, that range up there? No, uh, I didn't meet Ruth until after I moved to Minnesota, which is hilarious because I know more people in Minnesota that shoot now than when I lived in Minnesota. Um, <laughs> I, I like just started in. I lived in Red Wing, so I, uh, I shot at Lone Star there. It was a fairly okay. small range. Um, so it just kind of get started into it. Then we moved down here to Nebraska. And so, yeah, I didn't get to meet all those guys. Always, I'm sure we would have had a heyday. Even, uh, you know, Chad from the Bergera team was like, I didn't even know the guy. I was like, I, he's on the team and he's from the same state, you know, but it's just the, it gets, you know, the scene gets smaller the, the longer you're in it too. So yep. there's, a, there's a lot of good people, a lot of great shooters up there. So I'm kind of bummed. I didn't get to shoot with them more beforehand, but I'm trying to make up for it now. So. I think you are. <laughs> yeah. So uh, Josh wants to know when is the new Cronus or whatever is replacing it coming out? Man, the Gen 2 just rolled out, what, 
a, a year ago, year and a half ago, yeah. it's a relatively yeah. short time period. Um, there, there's stuff in the works down the road. Uh, 2023, you won't see it then. There is quite a launch in 2023. Uh, you're going to see our tactical lines expanding and such, but uh, the the Cronus, it'll it'll be here for a little bit. There, there's stuff in the works, but not uh, not not soon enough. Gotta wait for the uh, technology to grow a little bit more to make it worth relaunch or redeveloping a, a new product. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't want a, a Gen three with like, oh, we went from this crop or this knurling on your turret to this knurling on your turret, and we made. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and the Cronus right now is pretty solid. It's it's kind of hard to change that one up. If we just make it in brown. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> Knew that was going to come. Bring back the brown, man. <laughs> but it's funny, the the people who, or the, 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 the Gen 3 Razor release, people are like, ah, I only want black. So nobody's ever, no one's ever happy with what color it is. There's no way no. they're people happy. No, they're, until they come with a uh, paint by numbers and choose your own can of paint to paint it with, no one's going to be happy. <laughs> Beauty's only a Krylon can away, so. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> that needs to be a t-shirt or a bumper sticker or something. That's pretty solid. <laughs> yeah. That's solid. Beauty's only a Krylon can away. I like it. So. We haven't really talked much about optics, and that's kind of like a lot of what you guys do. So we know the 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 Gen Two Chronos isn't isn't that old. What else is kind of? I guess it's been a while since like it, it feels like everything was like stalled for the past two years because there was no shot and yeah. not seeing everybody. So what kind of recent advancements in the last couple of years has? Athlon gone through and what's kind of some of the newer optics out there kind of the hot sellers at the moment yeah so you know as as uh, you guys mentioned the Argos BTR that was kind of our bread and butter and kind of kicked off Athlon optics it was one of the one of the first scopes that you could go out spend 400 bucks on buy a 400 dollar rifle go shoot a thousand yards um, the gen 2 of it it's out now it picked up a zero stop the Helos BTR, it got a full redesign. Uh, it doesn't get talked about a whole lot, but it's hardly anything like the Gen 1 Helos BTR. The Gen 2, you still have the locking turrets. You pick up the zero stop, and that gets you into a budget 34 millimeter tube with 110 MOA, 32 mils of adjustment. Uh, it's a really solid optic. Um, and, and my favorite kind of go-to is, is still the Midas Tack line. It's great glass. It's a great balance of features. Uh, you just don't have illumination, which honestly, I only have one scope that has a battery in it. I, I don't put batteries in anything. I think the, so here's the funniest illumination story ever. Um, I followed Jennifer over into the precision rifle shooting because she wanted a, uh, a um, partner to shoot the gap grind with and one of our friends that we shot a bunch of three gun and USPSA with was leaving. So we had a big going away party and none of our pistol and rifle shooting or three gun shooting friends had really seen any of our guns. So when we had the party, she bought her rifle over um, and it had, you know, a MPA something, another with a night force attacker on it. And one of our friends got down behind it. We're like, yeah, check out the trigger, you know, play with it. And he starts messing with stuff. He's like, wow, I really like the illumination. And she goes, I didn't even know that thing worked. I've, never, I've literally never turned that knob. That's good to know. Yeah, yeah. Unless it's like my three gun scope or something, I I have hardly had a reason to to run illumination. Yeah. Besides, sure, maybe there's um, a, oh gosh, what was the name of the match that they held out at Arena? Kind of like a a nighttime match. Where you I'll say night night target. matches are becoming more and more prevalent. I think we're talking of Ruth and the Minnesota. I think they just put one on here not long they ago. They did the monster mash. I think it yeah. was called. And I wanted to shoot one. it, but I had to be down at the uh, Georgia Precision Rifle Expo. Uh, you were there, Greg. But say you, you have more important things to do, like hang out with me. Yeah, it was it was a good time. I wouldn't have missed it for anything except maybe the monster mash. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> 
Darren said it helps when it's dumping rain at an ELR match. This is very true. <laughs> Good to know. <laughs> yeah, we shot the uh, well. Athlon put on that ELR match earlier this year, and uh, we sh showed up, and it was the night before we were setting up targets and everything. It was just an absolute sauna. I mean, we were. It was terrible. And then Dustin hey. took us out for the best barbecue ever, and <laughs> then in the morning it was like shooting underneath a fire hydrant i mean it was terrible <laughs> it, but it was still, there was a lot of impacts at 500 yards that day i was there really were impressed. actually that was uh the people that, that showed up showed up to play and it was a great match it was a lot of fun and you know i, I don't know if i told you this but the uh, range owner said i didn't have a choice i have to host it again so october 29th <laughs> the second annual athlon optics 22 elr match will be happening that this is a awesome. must must go to for sure. So hopefully it'll be a little. Well, it's October though, so you don't know what it's going to do. That's like rolling. Might be snow this time. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So it might it might be the Minnesota people might come down feeling like home. So <laughs> we'll uh, we'll have a, a fun little hype video coming out about that here before long, and you guys can kind of get a sneak peek at what. Well, you can see what happened last year and see what everybody has to look forward to in October. I've never been so happy to be inside of a Connex box with a rifle. <laughs> I, I can relate to that. <laughs> yeah, you can. <laughs> this, this year at Gap Grind, I, I missed signing up, and I was just, you know, I've always wanted to RO it anyway because I love just giving back and helping out new shooters and stuff. So it's like, screw it. I'm going up there. I'm going to RO, help out everybody. Nice. And I could have I could have hugged Shannon K after I found out my stage assignment <laughs> in the pouring down rain. I was in a nice dry connex all the time. <laughs> I left to pee and to eat, and that's it. Yeah, so we, we roll up to your stage and you're all nice and clean and dry, and we're like, where have you been? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think like, uh I think our match had the first Buffalo carp target as uh Darren. Yeah, no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you can yeah, only see had... about an inch and a half of the back of a buffalo. It was all underwater. <laughs> it was like right now, draw. And it's, as the day went on, the buffalo got smaller and smaller and smaller. And of course, the, it's the farthest target out there, too. So eventually, you're like, well, if you kind of hit the water at this point, we'll call that a hit. <laughs> <laughs> Leon said he's still cleaning rust out of his rifle. No, I wouldn't <laughs> doubt it. <laughs> That's another good reason for that. Uh, that's carbon fiber and magnesium. When it comes around, I, I don't think you'll be having to use as much uh, rust-free breaker and stuff. So <laughs> there you go. Positives. Mm -hmm. It's always the random little things that that'll rust. You know, it's not like oh my. Well, I mean, with older stuff, but with everything I have, it's never like oh my barrel's rusting, my trigger's rusting. It's like this one one pin in the bipod. Or, <laughs> yeah. you know, you know, once the screw holding on my dope card holder or something like that is what will start to rust. <laughs> uh, I know, uh, I don't, I don't want to say a lie, but I think on the PDC chassis, everything is stainless. If not, uh, actually, I've, I've got some, I've got some pretty good rust spots on mine. I can show you right now. Uh, Cause this, this gun, honestly, since I've got it, I love it but it has not seen a match, but maybe one that's not been rained on. <laughs> <laughs> so like the weights are, the weights are actually steel. So I got a nice uh, patina, I'll call it. <laughs> See, <laughs> the, I don't uh, have any weights yet. I, I got to get my weight set. Yeah. The weights but, I got to use with my, with my rim fire. But, yeah, you know, for I the mean, most part, it, it doesn't rust much at all. It's all the hardware stainless and it's, it's solid. Yeah. I don't have any of the weights or any of the stuff like that. It's, you know, an aluminum chassis with a, rubber tlc grip and then yeah. the hardware like i think the sling cups are regular steel well i know the sling cups yeah are they are that's i got a nice golden hue in mine as well so <laughs> yeah it's but, character uh, all, all the hardware is still shiny you can kind of see yeah. it shining back there but let me, <laughs> let's check over if we have any luke said that was his first match ever and it sucked in a good way <laughs> <laughs> that is funny it was nice how it broke though for the for the awards in the end it was actually really nice when we left yeah so at least you didn't get to leave miserable so <laughs> i hate getting in a car when i'm soaked but if i have time to dry off i'm good 
because it's usually exactly. like two or three hours i got to drive home that's that's always bad <laughs> yeah if you can like if it stops for long enough where you could change out of your wet clothes into something before you drive home that makes it so much nicer because yeah. generally I, I drive home and i stew over every shot that i missed which is usually a lot <laughs> and and then i'm like soaked too on top of that so it's a pretty rough rough drive home <laughs> yeah I'm generally just struggling trying to stay awake. I have a bad tendency of going to matches way too far away and promising to be at work at like 7 a.m. the next morning. Uh, oh, yeah, it's it's always fun. Sometimes it doesn't work out. I put like coming home, home from KM, it's about an eight hour drive one time in the middle of the mountains, just like the roads closed. Like there's a truck on fire in the middle of the highway. There's a, a, a cliff up on one side, a cliff down on the other side. We're like, Stand in the middle of the highway, like, hey, how you guys doing? Where are you trying to get to? <laughs> Talks to my boss at like 11. I'm, like, I'm going to be late tomorrow. I strolled into work at noon. <laughs> I think I got home at 4 a.m. Sounds like coming oh. back from Texas. It was like a 13 hour drive back from a three gun match, wheeled into the office at like 3 30 in the morning. That was kind of rough. Ugh. Yeah, it's not fun. So let's kind of talk shooter recommendations. So like Shane, if someone came to you and said, hi, you know, I'm just starting out on an RL-22. I got this XYZ rifle, we'll say a Bagar B14R for keeping it relevant. Yeah. And I need a scope. What, what would you tell them? Uh, it's generally like I, I try to make sure to kind of dissect them right there because then, you know, there, there's such a fine line between you get those shooters that say, I only want to shoot base class. Like, well, do you really want to shoot base class or do you want to jump up here a little bit and just shoot what you want? Um, so we kind of, you know, dissolve that out down and see if, if base class is where they really want to sit. And then in that case, I'm usually, you know, go with like a, a BMR and then do a, a, like an Athlon Argus with it. I'm really big on the Argus just because bang for the buck, it's, it's pretty tough to beat that. Yeah. Um, as you start progressing a little bit farther on, of course, the Midas Tack is always kind of my go-to. Um, I generally, my favorite scope on my rim fire is my Aries ETR. I, I love the thing. Um, I've got my Cronus as well. Uh, I, I, I prefer my, my eyes seem to prefer the parallax on the Aries more. Um, so I generally kind of tell people, Hey, why don't you run towards this Midas? Maybe then look at the upper hand of that. Um, but a Midas tack, man, I shot one of those all last year and just absolutely loved it. So that's usually kind of the two I go through. Um, that was until the new Helos came out that, that new gen two Helos is a, is a beast. Um, I got one of the first ones. Kevin sent it to me to try out on a nil guy hunt down in Texas. And uh, man, that thing was, I couldn't believe it when I opened the box. I was, it just felt, it felt like it cost, you know, $600 more than it should have. And uh, it just, the, the finish and fit was so much better. And look, it kind of had that, you know, like there's a difference when you pull an Argus out of the box and you pull a Cronus out of the box, just kind of like a feel that they have. And that, that Helos, the new Gen 2, I mean, I, I feel that they probably shouldn't have even called it the Helos because it's so much better than the original version. Um, the, the turrets are better. I disagree with that. Yeah, the glass is so much better. Um, I liked enough to where after, I just basically got the, uh, was it the, the 2 to 12 to run on my hunting setup? And then after that, I was, that's when I'm going to run on all my hunting rifles because I can't process outside of first focal plane. <clears throat> And then um, I decided to get one of the newer, bigger ones to try out on the, the new Bergera comp rifle, just because, you know, if you have to buy an optic for every rifle you have, that's a good way to go broke. So um, I decided this, this Gen 2 is the way to go. So that I'll probably start leaning a lot more people towards that way. Um, the beautiful part is I generally try to have at least a couple of every, I, I generally always, I don't carry an Argus around anymore because I can always find one of those. But I always have a Helos, I always have a Midas, I always have an Aries, and most of the time a, a Cronus. So at a match, I'll be like, you want recommendations? Why don't you look through it and, and try that out? And I feel that's the best way because, I mean, I can tell you the best I can, but at the end of the day, man, it's up to your eyes and, and what you want to see. And But, I mean, generally most of the time for 90%, an Argus or a Midas is going to fit your bill, and, and you'll be able to shoot that just fine, and you can win matches with it. So. <clears throat> yes, you can. but yeah i fully agree with the, the the best way to figure out what you like or what you want is to look for yourself feel for yourself touch for yourself um i do kind of the same thing i got i'm lucky enough you know running my match i actually have four now match ready rimfire setups all with different glass on them all different rifles different chassis well two of them are in that beautiful lime green pdc custom beautiful <laughs> <Why not>? beautiful <laughs> it's it's nice to be able to you know let people 
you know, touch stuff, shoot stuff, play around with it and make their own decision versus like, oh yeah, this is what Jim Bob on, on the internet said. And that, that's the beauty what I found out about, I think I learned more about gear and just everything altogether. Once I started shooting matches, um, everybody is so friendly and wants you to try their stuff. I mean, that's, mm -hmm. that's what's crazy is like you, you ask something on the internet, well then all of a sudden everybody's a salesman and it's always going to sell you whatever they have or what they think is the best. But the best part is it matches. They do the same thing and then you get to look through it. So you And know, you know the people actually shoot matches if you're at a match. Exactly. It's not somebody off the internet that they're a, you know basically a bedroom rocker and all they do is take pictures of their gun and post them on Instagram and never do anything. You know, the people at the matches are the ones you want to listen to and you can see it and you can shoot it. That's awesome. It's a great community. Yeah, I, I love the... Uh how many times oh, i'm thinking about shooting some prs competitions you know i'm debating between six five and three eight and someone will come in you need a 300 win mag <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know, what <laughs> yeah tell, tell me you've never shot a match without telling me you've never shot a match <laughs> uh, it must be that power factor that they're running you know? <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah that's that's funny and the amount of times you see stuff like that but that that is true. Like for, uh, for me, I, I are owed a couple matches to get to, to learn a little bit, see a little bit. Then I went to the awesome precision rifle expo where, you know, there's all the booths with all the vendors that you get to talk to. And then there's the, the first two, there was two entire firing lines full of guns and glass and this and that. And the other thing where you go up to every booth and, you know, it may be, I don't know, the the area 419 booth where they're showing off their awesome muzzle brake, but also it's like, oh, this is a, a manor stock. Let's see how I like this. Or, oh, this yeah. also has, you know, a Warren bipod on it. Let's, let's try this and see how this feels for me. So you get to play with a bunch of stuff literally for 30 bucks or whatever super cheap price it was. Oh, yeah. So... That helped me a lot. I wish that that was a scale of event that we can get like in every state once a month, but obviously that's impossible. Yeah. I noticed you see a lot of things too, like side stages now popping up too for, for people to, I know it was, uh, I believe was, I think Darren went to a, a match and uh, like you went with him too, that one out to uh that uh the guys up in western or sorry eastern oh, yeah. Missouri yeah out. thompson river yeah the thompson river guys and they put up a stage mm -hmm. where he got to let people test drive the new bergera bmr and i think you guys put an argus on it you know and mm -hmm. so side stages you guys basically were shooting for candy or something you know <laughs> yep. it is just a good time to play and try something out you see more of that too that's it's it's great of a lot of these you know industry people to, to put their products out there to let people drive them and try them and that's a, you never see a shortage of Athlon products out there where people can, can shoot them and play with them and actually put their eyes on them, which is awesome. Shoot. So. At that match, there was a guy who run a couple of different suppressors that I've seen. I've looked at at trade shows, but I've never seen one in person and match got done. He threw it on my gun, sat there and shot with it, you know, just everyone's just really, really accepting and, and uh, encouraging when it comes to that kind of thing. You know, I, I wanted to try it. And he's like, yeah, here, throw it on your gun and Absolutely. sit down and, <laughs> and head at it. That is awesome. So Shane, what, uh, what big matches and stuff you got coming up this year that you're looking forward oh, to? Oh man. Uh, <clears throat> there's a lot of them. Of course, I've got to, I got to go try to defend my title at the Athlon ELR match. We'll see what we can do there. <laughs> um gap grind of course man i got my first taste of that this year i've been shooting five years i never have gotten to go to that and then uh bergera want us to take some of the guys from the factory there so uh you know phil and aaron came out and uh man we got to it was just two days of just fun even though it sucked from getting wet and everything but i'm not going to miss that one uh, i'm trying to dive more into to elr this year um i want to I, I got the kind of the bug of that from doing the some other stuff i went to a basically a beginner match that they had at uh Spear Point Ranch down in Kansas, which is like a mecca for ELR stuff, and uh, got down there and I got my first taste of watching bullets fly over four seconds. So I definitely I want to try to get <laughs> I want to try to get to uh, to King of Two Mile eventually. Um, hopefully we can come up with some heat that'll do it. Uh, of course I'm gonna try some NRL Hunter this year. Um, I know myself and Andrew Combs we're gonna try to get to uh, 
the Heartland Harvester. Uh, we're going to try to get the, the new Athlon bipods out there. Um, if they make it back from SHOT Show, hopefully, maybe we can get some of those, those Cure rifles here in time. Uh, it basically, it's all kind of boiling down to the, the Union boys there. And uh, yep. <laughs> if they can get them out, you know. So um, that and just, like I said, just everything I can. Lots of rim fire. Just basically, I'm just going to shoot until my wife tells me I'm leaving you or you're going to maybe miss a weekend. That's, <laughs> that's what I plan to do. <laughs> Ruth said he forgot about the MPS match on June 25th. Yeah, that is true. I have, I keep telling Ruth, I'm going to go up there and shoot and I have no excuses. So I'm going. <laughs> <laughs> Plus the, the rim fires are way cheaper to shoot. And I, I really enjoy that part of it. And I don't have to spend hours in front of the reloading bench, you know, but hopefully when Hornaday starts cranking out more of these six GT rounds, we can, uh, you know, start, start buying there that ammo go. instead of reloading all the time. But mm -hmm. Time mm -hmm. will tell. <laughs> say, I always say rim fire is cheap, but oh, you can't see it in there. But literally uh, the day before I left for a shot, my uh, my shipment from my trip to the La Pua Test Center showed up. Oh, no. Yeah, that's... <laughs> I, I was so worried with the way with the way shipping's been recently. I was like, yep. watch, I'm gonna have like over a thousand dollars worth of ammo sitting in my porch for a week. That'd be horrible. But it showed up the day before I left. Oh, lucky. Yeah. It was expensive, but I don't have to worry about 22 ammo for a couple minutes at least. Yeah. What'd you wind up <laughs> Center X or something? Or yep, Center X. Yeah. And I so I've been sh I've been shooting Center X ever since I got the 457, which is when I really started competing yeah. um it's always shot well for me and you know i've had up batch up lots and down lots and you know it started out as buy a box here buy a box there and with the way it's been recently i was like screw it i was also lucky enough i was going to visit my little brother who lives in um columbus ohio so it's like oh, a 35 perfect. minute drive from there to the test center so oh, man. visited luke on the monday i was coming back and then drove home That what is about you, Dustin? Bucket list. Dude, it's yeah, it's worth it. I'll be I'll be shooting a lot more 22s this year. Uh, finally got some primers, so tried to squeeze in a couple of center fire matches. I was, try, I was talking to um, Ben Blevins. I think I got to go shoot a, a machete Yeti or oh yeah, uh, one of his Yeti matches. Yeah, he's, he's trying to talk me into one of those. Uh, probably go down to Oklahoma again. Do that every year. That's always a good one. I'm going to get you to San Antonio too here in a couple months. I'm sure of it. We're going. Oh there. yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. Road trip. We're going to go see Travis and we're going to, we're going to go party in San Antonio and shoot stuff. That wouldn't be too bad. I wouldn't <laughs> mind it. Yeah. <clears throat> no, uh, no specific matches on mine in mind for me. Just try to do a little bit of everything again, if I can. Awesome. And uh, what, uh, what big matches and series is Athlon putting on and helping out and sponsoring this year off the top of your head uh well hosting the 22 elr match again well, that's uh that's the, down at our local local range great plains precision uh, in ottawa kansas so we'll be hosting that one um gosh we sponsor we sponsor a lot of matches a lot of nrl 22x a lot of three gun um we sponsor a lot of three gun locally too down in Missouri. You've got the, uh, the lead farm and, and Gatson, um, gen three guns, one of the big ones that they, that we sponsor down there. Um, yeah, there'll be, be quite a few matches sponsored this year. Awesome. Well, thanks again for everything you guys do do to help out our sports. Cause without glad people, we can do it. People in companies like you, we'd definitely not be having as much fun. Yep. All right. Well, let me check lives one more time. Sorry, I'm trying to do everything. <laughs> a man of I... many hats. <laughs> I laugh because there's another optics company that likes to stop, talk smack on my hats. <laughs> <laughs> and which ones I choose? Um, let's see. They're talking all sorts of trash about your Corvettes over here. Oh, I'm sure they are. Everybody, that's been a. <laughs> That dang thing has turned into a, uh, it was supposed to be a nice, easy Thanksgiving swap. So basically I guess to bring people up, I, I really, really like horsepower and all things fast. 
and uh, decided that we were going to twin turbo my C5 Corvette. And this was going to be the greatest thing ever. Uh, here we sit like, two months later. But <laughs> 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 it's supposed to be, I will have it in and out in 20 hours. It'll be easy. So yeah, everybody was like, today I was like, we're going to give you so much crap about getting that car out of my garage and get running. And yeah, I got more important things to do, like talk about rifles, you know, things that I like to do. <laughs> Oh, so now he's blaming his broken car on us. You're going to have to get that fixed so we can hey, get that trip to San Antonio. Now. I was going to say, I hope that sucker's running in the next two weeks, but I've always jinxed myself every time. But thanks for the constant reminder and the, you know, the motivation, fellas. I really appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, isn't it good to have friends? I, I told you at the beginning of this, I was like, your life feed's probably going to blow up because my, my friends are assholes. <laughs> <laughs> But who needs oh, enemies yeah. with friends like this? So <laughs> I love them all, though. That's great. So yeah, they're 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 good people. That's the uh, the beauty. I, some of the best friends I've made have been in you know precision rifle and just mm -hmm. firearms in general. Because this generally attracts good people, and we all are into the same stuff and love freedom, love having a good time and shooting things, and it's man, it's a great day. So exactly it, it is definitely like the greatest group of people that I've ever met. And you know, you can be shooting on a squad with you know, one guy that uh, is a landscaper, another guy that's a pilot, another guy that's a mechanic, another guy that's an engineer. You got a nurse and a doctor and everything. And people from everywhere. And not, none of us really care about anything because we all like shooting. So it doesn't really matter, you know, where you come from, what you do. Did you, did you fly your own private plane to the match or did <laughs> you drive your 1997 Suburban? Oh, the, bourbon, the bourbon suburban hall is more rifles so i mean i'm kind of, <laughs> kind of jealous of the guy with the suburban honestly <laughs> yeah i uh i just wish they still made a diesel if they made a diesel suburban then it would be a real hard sell not to you know that you could probably do that but it might end up about like my corvette project to where it just takes a little bit longer but you can do it you know <laughs> <laughs> with enough money you think that's possible. right that's right yeah a can-do attitude. <laughs> Le Le Leon said you can use it to tow your C5. You know what? That's a good thing. <laughs> I, I got a, because I rock my, my truck, actually, I take all the matches. I'm still rocking a 2007 GMC. So when that thing is on the trailer behind my 2007, I'm going to be like the coolest dude ever in 2007. <laughs> it took me a while. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So real quick before we wrap up, Travis said you got to tell us about your your hunt. Apparently it was epic. The what? About your I don't know how to say that word. The the, the big Oh god, the meal guy hunt. Oh man. So <laughs> Wow, this was crazy. So I went down I decided uh my brother and I we we run a company called uh it used to be called Head Hangers now it's called the Hanger Co. So we do like a uh, European skull mount bracketry and things like that. And uh, we went down to Dallas, uh, Texas for a, a trade show down there. And uh, I saw this creature I'd never seen or heard of. It's, it's called a nil guy. It's a, um, an Asian antelope. They're about the size of an oak, like 650 pounds on the hoof. And if you can imagine like if a cow and a horse got together and did a lot of steroids, that's what these <laughs> things look like. I mean, they're, they're the craziest things there. I hope everybody's Googling this now because these are the weirdest looking creatures ever. And so anyways, I, I booked this hunt with some guy I met on the internet because we know how good those all work out. And uh, so I go down all the way to Brownsville, Texas. I drive straight through. I leave here in Nebraska at like 830 in the morning. I get down there at like 1030, 11 at night, uh, you know, text my guide saying, hey, we're I'm here. I'm ready to do this. And uh, I was like, I'll see you in the morning. He goes, well, there's a tropical storm coming in. So I'm going to hunt you an extra night. If you can go out tonight, like, well, I've already been driving all day. Why not? Let's just, let's just go for broke and stay up all night. Um, because the way it is, they, you basically, you, you spot them and with thermals and stuff, then you stock them down. And uh, so anyways, I drive down to Brownsville, meeting people I've never met before on the internet. Uh, I wind up at an abandoned fruit stand, like two miles off the border of Mexico. And these guys are like having me park my truck there. I'm like sending my brother, Lucas, like pin drops going this is where i'm at dude i have no idea what's going on but if you guys don't <laughs> find me here it is um because you know of course down there too i'm just a big gringo from nebraska so i don't speak any i don't hobble espanol 
And uh, <laughs> so anyways, <laughs> these guys are talking for, I'm like, I might as well be in another country. They load me up. They basically, I'm sitting there talking to the guy and all of a sudden this like, stealth bomber of a vehicle pulls up it's a, a yukon denali that's completely blacked out all the lights everything shining this thing is gone there's no lights on the inside of it um i'm pretty sure i know what this car is used for when we're not hunting no guy and so <laughs> i'm sitting in this car you know and i just hitting in the desert we, we take off and he kills the lights they put on nods and just hit off the roads to just take off and I'm like, you've got to be kidding me, man. What is going on here? And of course they know I'm nervous. So they told us uh, basically crack and joke time, you know, cause I, I tend to bring those type of people around. Uh, <laughs> we actually don't, uh, we don't nil guy hunt here. We, we kidnap gringos and we hold them ransom for money and we're going to Mexico. <laughs> and I'm just like, well, that about figures out. This is why this hunt was so cheap. And uh, so then like, of course, yeah, I'm like, well, unfortunately for you, like we come back full circle. I told you, my, my friends are assholes. They all hate me and they don't have any money. And then those guys just busted out laughing. I thought everything was great, you know? So that was the way we kind of broke the ice for this. And uh, we're in this thing like cruising. And uh, next thing you know, they spot stuff in the thermals. They kick me out of the truck with one other guy. And then he just takes off and leaves us for like a half hour while we try to stock these things down. Turns out it was, it was a white tailed deer. You know, so we stock those guys for nothing. It's like 90 degrees, even at midnight, I'm sweating, you know, and first night we were unsuccessful. Second night, I'm like, you know, everything kind of soaked in. I'm like, I think I'm hunting with the cartel, man. This is cool. <laughs> <laughs> Second night we're driving around and, uh, we happened to find a, get onto some new guy that night. And, uh, so I, I find my one, I have my 300 PRC. That was when I was testing out that two to 12 Argus. So it's like, 11 o'clock at night under a red light got my new guy man i'm feeling great and uh about the time i get to get out this guy was like sit down we're taking care of this and they they put me in the truck and then they we take off and then he calls like five or six of his buddies show up in like this other swamp fox looking vehicle and uh i, I don't know exactly the legalities of the animal that we shot i'm pretty sure everything was on the up and up i sure hope so uh, but I got my Neil guy and uh, it was really good. I, I ended up getting home and uh, I'm pretty sure I hunted with the cartel and it was a great time. I lived to tell about it and uh, I'd probably go back. <laughs> that is so much more epic of a story than I ever expected. <laughs> Dude, I, was, I went from scared, to my, scared for my life to happy as could be to, uh, it, it was nuts, man. I just, uh, you, you can't explain it, but that thing was great. And it's some of the best food I've ever had. Uh, when it's we great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It does. Got, I brought a bunch. Of, so actually, uh, when I got home to Nebraska, um, I had to figure out what I'm going to do with this thing. It's literally like four coolers full of meat. Four of those like 160 quart coolers full of meat. That's how big these things are. And uh, so I take it up to the local butcher shop and he's like, we're really famous for our hot dogs. And I was like, yeah, whatever. Let's make some hot dogs those are the best hot dogs I've ever had in my life. And uh, so when we went down to, uh, you know, the Ralston match that Aaron and Athlon, the guys all put on there, um, we had a barbecue at Aaron's house at AJ there and uh, ate the crap out of it and had a great time. So yeah, every, everybody gets to participate in the hunt. <laughs> nice. Yeah. It, it's a trip, man. But the things you get to, to do with, with a rifle, you know, so I just can't imagine the, uh, the look on those border patrol agents when they see a six, three, 300 pound guy and these other little dudes walking through the walking, you know, right by the Rio Grande with the rifle and, you know, trying to figure out what's going on there. So <laughs> I'm, I'm sure there's, I'm sure there's some funny like FLIR video somewhere. So, cause I wasn't very graceful walking through those cactuses. <laughs> <laughs> I'd, I'd imagine their, their, the looks on their face is a lot the way mine looked when I first Googled what this animal looks like. Yeah, I know, right? That thing is crazy. And you see the ones from there up front, they look like, I mean, it's almost like if Dwayne Johnson was an animal. <laughs> <laughs> that is, uh, how did you describe it? Uh, 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 Basically, if, if a horse and a cow got together and had a baby that did a lot of steroids. <laughs> It's kind of it's like a, a cow body with a horse head with elk legs i mean they're, they're weird and like a trophy has like a 10 inch devil horns on the top of it and they're 
they, they can be fairly aggressive as far as like they're, they're very inquisitive so like if you're walking to them what they told me to do at least is if you stand up tall and look wide they'll come to you because they want to kick your ass and oh that's a so lovely position like, to be in i was like this does not especially at night i'm in the desert this is great yeah what, what's the worst that could happen <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna try and fight the devil cow horse <laughs> yeah so uh yeah luckily uh the 300 prc dropped it right in its tracks and, and we were set man so that was uh one of the times that an illuminated octave pulled that off because i there needed that thing that night so yep it was it was a hell of a time i i said i'd go back in a second but maybe maybe a little under different circumstance i'd like to shoot one in the daylight <laughs> <laughs> The cartel is still cool. It's just the light thing is the problem. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I was, uh, I wanted to take pictures of the vehicle, and they wouldn't let me take pictures of the vehicle. And that's when I was like, all right, this a is, little uh, suspicious. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, it was, it was super cool. It was, it was like mission control in there. But yeah, when they put nods on and veered off the road, I was like, what did I get myself into? You know, and of course, phone doesn't work that well down there. But luckily. Luckily, my brother got the text and the pin drop, so they could at least maybe found my truck. But <laughs> <laughs> that's good. So that, they'd at least have something to tow the Corvette out of the garage with. That is true. <laughs> and man, the the meat was totally worth it. So as soon as the, the the freezer runs out, I'm I'm going back for sure. But I'll probably go to King Ranch or something now that I know it's worth it. <laughs> Aaron said that the hot dogs were epic. Yeah, Aaron loves those hot dogs. Every time I talk to him, he's like. We bring some of those down. So if I could find a way to ship them good, I'd probably send him some. <laughs> so if you if you have any left, I got right next year. I just want to try like even just like half of one. I just gotta say I tried it. I'll make sure we got some by Gap Grind. If I gotta go down and get another one. So <laughs> all right. <laughs> or maybe or maybe you could get up here before Gap Grind. Gap Grind's still a ways away. So yeah, I'm I'm I gotta figure out what I'm doing this year, but I I am pretty solidly booked so far. So uh, that's not a bad problem. Mm -mm. <laughs> we're doing a lot with the uh the vortex uh, vortex team sniper challenge this year i saw that that looks pretty cool it looks like it's going to be an epic match they're, they're supposed mm -hmm. to have one in iowa i thought about going in ro and it just to see what it's all about well, there you go bring some hot dogs i'll see you there all right if you're gonna be there <laughs> i believe i should be there so <laughs> awesome yeah unless there's another match i absolutely have to go shoot then yeah that's on sweet um dave said athlon customer service is great he had a problem with the scope on monday before a match and called them and had a new scope by thursday thanks guys not bad it's awesome i love hearing those stories stories like that are awesome i uh with my two athlons i've yet to yet have a chance to experience the customer service so that i guess is also another good story yeah <laughs> I haven't, I haven't broken one yet. I break a lot of stuff. So. You'd be surprised some of the stuff that comes in. It, it's <laughs> uh, it's interesting. I've shown Shane some photos. Yeah, yeah well, the guys are like, uh, uh, what are these marks? Did you use this to hammer nails? Well, I couldn't find my hammer. <laughs> we, we've <laughs> had scopes come stuff. in with bullet holes in them. They're drawn, <laughs> they're drawn from a holster and their rifle's laying in front of them and they'll put a bullet right through the scope. <laughs> that's that's special oh yeah so uh, can i no nah, i'll tell you guys off air that story our our funniest customer story <laughs> but, uh, all right i don't think we have anything else in the live so we can probably go ahead and wind this one down to shout outs awesome which one of you guys wants to start fine I'll choose that. <laughs> <laughs> Justin, I'll, I'll let you go ahead and start. You got anybody to shout out to? All right. So I'll give a shout out to DST Precision. Uh, needed some ammo. It came through for me. So thank you, Troy. Appreciate it. Shane? Troy's a G. Oh, man. Of course, you know, we got to have the Bergera, of course. Um, they make a lot of this stuff happen. Uh, Athlon, as always, always answered the call. I've been with them even before i was shooting for bergara anything like that um they've always been great um the guys that we be bad uh aaron and aj of course kind of made a lot of this he's kind of the glue that kind of brought all of us all together really you can't forget um, so it he's just too good of a dude it's pretty tough yeah it's you can't have like a conversation about rimfire or athlon or anything without having that man's name come up 
um, it just he's like I said, he's kind of that glue that just brings people together for that. Um, he's right. kind of AJ's really, playing. really, he's, he's done it. Yeah, really in charge of putting the the Bergera team together. Really, he he that was mm-hmm. a, lot, a lot of his brainchild there. So I mean, it's a lot of good things and a lot of a lot of positivity in the the rifle scene comes from Aaron. So um, definitely got a shout out to that guy. And then, uh, of course, you know, you guys there at the, the Shooter's Mindset, I actually watch quite a bit because you guys spread a lot of good information and, and hook people up with, um, you know, different companies and different people that you might not might not get to see or meet a lot of times unless you're shooting somewhere regionally or whatever. So that, that's pretty cool. You guys are out here doing really good work. Thank you. And that's kind of what drew me to this show is, you know, I started off as a longtime viewer and it's just like, oh, I get to like just sit here and like see all of these you know people that are famous in the shooting world and like if i have a question i could just like ask it and someone will ask it on air mm-hmm. and, like yeah <laughs> it, it is really cool I, I like the format plus it's a whole lot of fun to actually do this and just get you know i have an excuse to get literally any person in the shooting world in front of me for an hour or two and just like pound them with questions i mean we had for two hours Freaking Brian Litz and Emil Praslik on here. At oh our man! Complete That'd be total good. disposal. We could ask any question we wanted to. It was amazing. And also, it's a good excuse to just like meet new people and get to chat. Um, so shout outs for me. I got GSL suppressors over here because I like my quiet little twenty twos. Like yes, silent. Um, so there's that. Shooters and sharpshooters of Augusta are our local indoor and outdoor ranges here in town. PDC Custom for the most beautiful chassis known to man um, <laughs> i agree <laughs> mm-hmm. uh shooters world powder um they still have it you can buy it locally here at shooter or yeah at shooters of augusta um i've been using it pretty much my whole shooting career and like double digit sds are a really weird thing for me so it's great um hunters hd gold i am um, I am blind and I'm less blind with those things on. You can get them in prescription. You can just buy them off the shelf. You can get them in whatever frames you want. So they're awesome. Check them out um, and fix it sticks because I have always liked taking stuff apart ever since I was like five years old. Anytime something broke, I'm taking it apart. So now I have fancy tools that I could take stuff apart with. Also, they're like nice and convenient and portable and like really high quality that too. Um, but yeah, I guess we can call this a wrap for episode 364 of the Shooter's Mindset, and we will catch you guys next week.